I'm wearing my hat for my mother, Iredale Bright, for my mother-in-law, Ruthie Dickerson, and for all the mothers of Cedar Grove Baptist Church. I wear my hat for my grandmother, Sally McCrory, for my grandmother, Cora Wilson, and McKenna gonna say who she wear her hat for. Grandma Gray. Good morning, everybody. I'm wearing my hat in the honor of my beautiful mother, Lizzie Gordon, and my big sister, Janie May. in memory of Exa B. Thompson and Mammy Eggers.
Amen. <laughs> I'm so glad. Amen. He died for me. And you know, even in 2022, there is still power in the name of Jesus. Amen. <laughs> not, not that you don't know this, but I just want to remind you that at the name of Jesus, every knee is going to bow. Amen. And there is no other way whereby man can be saved in the name of Jesus and I tell you that a lot of our problems many of our tribulations and all of our soul diseases can be solved if we learn how to call on the name a man of Jesus Rashida, Laquita, Takasha, Rashonda, Bill, Bob, Daryl, Donnie, Harold, Henry, Howard. All of those are fine, but none of them can truly, amen, set you free. Only one name, amen, Jesus, who can truly set you free. Amen. God bless you, hymn choir. God bless you, musical choir. But those of you that have your word, say, I brought mine. Those of you that didn't say, shame on me. Amen. God bless you. Briefly, we will bring our message from the scripture related to Matthew chapter 15. Amen. Starting at verse number 21. Amen. And according to my notes, I preached this on my birthday last year, May 14th. Oh, no, 2006. May 14, 2006. Amen. <laughs> Amen. The book of Matthew, chapter 15, starting at verse number 21. Hello, my old friend. Amen. And when you have it, say, I see it. If you're still looking, say, just one minute. Amen. And this is what the word of God says in the 15th chapter of St. Matthew, starting at verse 21. It says, Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. But he answered her not a word, and his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not meet to take the children's bread and to cast it to the dogs. And he said, Truth, Lord. Yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from the master's table. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, thou, or great is thou faith, be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that hour. Amen. Let us glean, if you will, from verses 21 through 25, simply a mother's request. A mother's request. Amen. And if we were to bring that into 2020 and close-knit families, we could even say a mama's request. Amen. Let us pray. Our mighty God, again we come, petition your throne. Thanking you, Father God, for what we have been blessed to see, hear, and feel. We thank you for the presence of your Holy Spirit. But now, oh God, I pray that you will help me during this preaching hour. I pray that you would preach to me as I preach to your people. Lead me as through your word they are led. 
Father God, forgive us for we have sinned. Have mercy upon us and make us right with thee. Empty us, O oh God, that through your word we might be filled again. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Again, I bid you happy Mother's Day. Amen. We're here again, if you will, in the book of St. Matthew, chapter 15. Christ Jesus is doing a whole lot of teaching, and he's doing very little preaching. For he discovered that the people were still wrapped up in tradition to the point where tradition was starting to easily beset them. And when it comes to hearing and receiving the truth, tradition was literally getting in the way. And he was trying to teach them in a very gentle way, Deacon Knox, how they could strafe or sidestep, amen, tradition. Because Deacon Brown, he knew the ramifications of those who held tight to tradition. When you hold tight to tradition, you leave very little room, amen, for progress. Are y'all walking with me? Tradition will get you sometimes in a lot of trouble. Amen. As a matter of fact, it is biblically, amen, proven that tradition can actually stunt your spiritual growth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We find that folk who hold on so tightly to tradition, amen, should be eating the meat of the word. But year after year, even though they are acquainted with the word of God, and inundated, amen, with spirituality in the church, we still find them suckling, amen, on the milk. And it appears as though although they have been in church a long time, nothing has changed. And God was not pleased with that, so he's trying to teach the people on a different level because many of them were like us. They felt that as long as they showed up at the service, amen, as long as they gave of their finances, as long as they shouted every now and then, as long as they creeped up and whispered a simple amen, that that was all that was required of them, amen. Now, now notice, if you will, they are so wrapped up in tradition that Christ actually had to stop by and preach, amen, a monumental message to get them out of their own way. And I have come by to let you know that many times we fall short not because of somebody else, but because of us, not because other folks are limiting us but because we are limiting ourselves. Not because somebody else has told us no, but in our own mind and intellect, we tell ourselves no. Are y'all walking with me? So Christ found it necessary to teach a people who had potential how to get out of their own way. Yeah, they were still holding on to traditions of even hand washing. When the disciples were trying to do those things that were good, the Pharisees and the Sadducees and some of the Jewish folk began to admonish them because of the way they washed their hands. We do simple stuff like that all the time. We see this big picture, but we're looking at one spot on the canvas and missing the whole picture. My brothers and sisters, there was a tradition that when they dried and washed their hands that water could not run from the wrist to the elbow. And if water ran from the wrist to the elbow, they would have to wash again because now that's considered dirty water. Are y'all walking with me? 
So they had to wash their hands in the way. And after they washed their hands, they had to hold their hands like this until their hands dry. Because the water could now drip off the wrist. Nobody eats with the wrist. So it's okay for the wrist to be dirty. And if they didn't see you washing your hands and drying them like this, you were breaking the law. Are y'all walking with me? Didn't make a difference that folk were sleeping with other folks' wives. Didn't make a difference that folk were sacrilegious. It did not make a difference that folk were talking about one another. But as long as you wash your hands right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They even had, they even had a God by the name of Shitda. The God Shitda is known to rest upon your hand as you slept. Yeah, he would sit upon your hands and defile your hands. So when you woke up in the morning, the first thing you had to do was to wash your hands. Because if you didn't, everything that you touch would be defiled. Crazy stuff. But here they have Jesus Christ, son of the living God. And they are contesting, amen, his message. Won't the devil get in the way? Make us look foolish. Make us believe things that are not so. <laughs> Amen. Now, now he said that there's some important things that we must know. Some important things that we must remember. So he was teaching them about tradition and about hypocrisy. Are y'all walking with me? About defiling not just your body, but your spirit. And lo and behold, as Christ was teaching, here comes a woman desperate done all she could do talk to everybody leaned on everybody shoulder why because every single day she would witness her baby girl ripping at her skin talking out of her mind and the Bible leads us to believe that this demon was an action demon. Wasn't just mental, but he had the ability and the authority to make this woman move at its command. Are y'all walking with me? They have this woman every day looking at the child that she bore, looking at the child that suckled from her breast, looking at the child that she... Her call her mama, mommy, mom, madre on many occasions. Yeah, now being vexed, as a matter of fact, sorely vexed with the devil. The Bible says Christ went through to a man as he departed from the coast of Tyre and Sidon. There was a Canaanite woman who came out of the same coast. And I wondered why didn't Matthew have to put that there was a Canaan woman? What was the significance of the Canaanite woman? Well, if you look, my brothers and sisters, and you study the Bible, and you study it well, you will see that there is a history, amen, with Christ and Canaan. Amen. Not a good one, but they were enemies of Jesus the Christ. And when I look at this, it doesn't take much to read between the lines and realize that we serve a forgiving God. One who understands that men, women, boys, and girls will fall sometime. That they will make mistakes sometime. So he thought it necessary to bring up the fact that this was an enemy of Christ coming. Yeah, the best way that she knew how looking for deliverance from the master. Deacon Peterson, I stopped by to inform you all that there might be somebody in the congregation today who feel that you have lost your way, who feels that you are enemies with the Lord, who have fallen down and failed to get up, 
who have started on the Christian journey just to fall back into carnality. I stopped by to inform you today that if you would just call on the name of Jesus, does not matter where you are, does not matter what you've done, does not matter who Molinem is, I stop by and inform you that if you call on the Lord, he will hear your cry. But notice, if you will, there was some opposition. All the woman said was, have mercy on me. Notice how God puts this together. The woman did not have a spirit of demonic in her. The woman was not being torn of her flesh daily. The woman did not repulse and convulse on a daily basis. But I find in the word where the mama said, Lord, have mercy on me. Are y'all walking with me? Now my mind is beginning to traverse a little bit, trying to figure out why this woman, who seemed to be in good shape, is asking God to have mercy on her. But I found out a long time ago that when you have children and you love your children, when they hurt, yeah, you hurt. When they are in pain, you are in pain. Are y'all walking with me? And I discovered here that the mother had a close relationship with her baby girl. And I imagine, because I was not there, that every time the devil rent her clothes, every time the devil cut her skin, every time she would fall and convulse, that the mama would feel the same pain the mama will feel the same strain. So I understand why in the word of God, she said, Lord, have mercy on me, thou son of David. Are y'all walking with me? She said, my daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. Now, if you don't mind, in the Greek text, that word grievously simply means that she's miserably possessed with a demon. Something I cannot understand. Something I cannot fix by myself. I can imagine because I was not there watching this mama grab her baby girl as she began to rid it right trying to hold her down to protect herself but the demon was a little too strong are y'all walking with me but now she found out that jesus the christ was coming through town and she heard that this man was raising dead folks from the grave. She heard that this man was giving sight to the blind. She heard that this man was healing paralytics and casting out demons. So she found her way, dragging baby girl. I don't know, cause I was not there, but I'm sure OBL's above was trying to hold her back. I stopped by to let you know that every time you draw near 
unto the Lord. Beelzebub is trying to pull you back, trying to stop your blessing, trying to block your blessing. But I'm glad today that the persistence of a good mama would not give up, would not back down, will not turn around. But when she sees her baby in trouble, everything else goes out the window. She's willing to give up her life to save her child. But notice, if you will, the Bible says, she says, my baby is grievously vexed with the devil. I know you can if you just will. But the word says that Jesus said not a word. You ever been there before? When you called on God, even in the midnight hour, thinking your faith is strong and imparted. But Jesus never comes to your rescue. God never fix your problem. I stopped by to inform you that if you hold on, hold on, hold on, and don't let go, God will, God will come through on time. She began to beg, and then desperation got to the better of her she needed an answer because her baby was still sick but i heard where jesus said talking to his disciples won't church folk get in the way church folk would sometimes block your blessing telling you to hold on let go Deal with it. Church folk can sometimes slow you down. Here comes the disciples saying, Lord, here she comes again. I know you heard her screaming in the distance. She won't let it go. Won't give it up. She know you're not saying anything to her. But now here she comes. Then the Lord had to speak. I know you didn't think that the word was just for you, but it's for you and everybody else. Are y'all walking with me? He had to set some things straight. I came here to give the word to you and then to the Gentiles. But when Jesus ignored the lady, the lady didn't give up. Had some fight in her. Had some zestiness in her. This is my last chance. I got to get close to him. She probably heard about the woman who simply touched the hem of Jesus' garment. I got to get close. And my Bible says that she fell down and began to worship him. Won't show children make you pray for them won't show children make you act crazy won't show children make you go all the way oh yes they will and i'm glad i'm glad that we serve a god who will let us know that he's full in effect i heard you cry i heard your prayer now let me work with this thing. The Bible says that he answered and said, it's not meat to take the children's bread and to cast it to the dogs. Now in the Greek text, that word dog is pronounced kunerion. And kunerion is not a derogatory name, but it simply means little puppy. They had little puppies in the house to help the maids clean up the scraps after dinner was served. So you were blessed to be a house puppy. Are y'all walking with me? I don't know about you, but I'd rather be a house puppy than to be a junkyard dog 
any day of the week. The Bible leads me to believe that when you come to the Lord, that he's able to say, great is our faith. Here receive your blessing. The Bible says, Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Notice he hadn't said anything to the girl. Hadn't spoken to the demon. He went to mama because mama had the faith that could shake and move mountains because mama already knew what the son of David could do. That's why my brothers and sisters, as parents of an upcoming generation, we have to remind them that we still serve a God that can do anything but fail. And instead of running to Facebook, instead of running to Instagram, instead of running to whatever, they need to run to the great I am. The amen, the first and the last, the king of kings, lord of lords, El Shaddai, Jehovah Rohi, Jehovah said canoe, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Shalom, my God is the Mr. Fix It of everything my god is too present to be absent too near to be far too right to be wrong to hear to be nowhere i'm glad that we serve a god who still hears the requests of a mother my brothers and sisters the bible says that god bless her it says great is thy faith be it even as thou wilt and her daughter was made whole from that very hour listen my brothers and sisters know that we still serve the same god same son same holy ghost Amen. <laughs> yeah. If he can take down a giant with a little shiny smooth stone, and if he can allow a little boy to kill a, a wolf and a bear, if he can just by being present split a red sea in the Jordan River, if he can, my brothers and sisters, just look at a fig tree and say, hey, you done and it dries up and withers away. If he can, even for his enemy, pick up a dusty, dirty, infected ear off the ground and place it back on his head like brand new. He can show enough, fix your power bill. He can fix your job situation. He can fix your marriage. He can fix your social gatherings. God can do it. And I'm a witness that he can. Amen. We thank God for his son, Jesus Christ gave his life that we might have a right to the tree of life.